If all this looks familiar to you, it's probably because that's how you store your videos and photos, right? Right? I know you are all the same. And I've stored and archived all my projects on these external drives for years until one day, one of my clients accidentally dropped one of my hard drives where I lost a year's worth of projects. Yep. And they refused to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And ever since that day, I've been looking for a solution where I can store and archive all my projects. Not on multiple external drives like this, but just one simple storage solution where I have easy access to my files. Introducing the QNAP TVS 472 XT NAS. <laughs> If you don't know what a NAS is, it's a network attached storage unit. Basically, it's a huge hard drive that multiple users can access files to over a network, either on site like in an office or anywhere around the world as long as you have internet access. It's pretty cool. Now with most NAS units, you can only access your files via network, but this one, the TBS 472XT, that's a mouthful, you can connect your computer directly via Thunderbolt 3 and access your files that way. So not only is it a NAS, a network attached storage unit, but it's also a DAS, a direct attached storage unit. So at first I was looking for a typical RAID setup, you know, a big old enclosure with multiple hard drives connected to your computer, but I did want the ability to access my file should I need to if I were filming on location and I, I needed a graphic or, or something. I just wanted that ability to access my files from my home studio to wherever I was filming at. I actually put this out on Twitter a, a while ago and the good people at QNAP reached out to me and said, hey, we might have a product for you. It's a four bay NAS system, but you can also connect it to your computer directly via Thunderbolt 3 and I was like hmm interesting I actually didn't do that that'd, that'd be funny if I, I did that with brands in fact I might do that with brands from now on hmm interesting by the way QNAP is not sponsoring this episode but they did send over this unit for me to review and so full disclosure so they sent out one of their NAS units and I can honestly say it's solid. Like I've been using it for the past few months now and it's been perfect for my project workflow. And if you're a creator like me, then I think this NAS might be perfect for you as well. I'm gonna show you my entire project workflow in just a sec, but let's go ahead and talk about the TBS 472 XT. So this NAS is a four bay drive setup, meaning you can install up to four hard drives. The hard drives that I use are the Seagate Iron Wolf NAS drives at 14 terabytes each, baby. And I've got four of them, meaning that I have a net capacity of 56 terabytes. 56 terabytes. I've set up my NAS to RAID 5, meaning that I have about 40 terabytes to use. We'll talk about that in a sec, but four 14 terabytes, four of them. Woo! And these hard drives are solid. I mean, they're meant for NAS setups and can run for long periods of time. The TVS472 has multiple Thunderbolt 3 ports, multiple USB 3 ports, 10 gigabit connectivity, an HDMI port so that you can connect your monitor, audio input and output, a USB port in the front and a copy button next to it where you can actually copy files from an external drive to your NAS or vice versa. So cool. You can install two NVMe SSD slots for caching. In other words, you can speed up the transfer of files from your computer to the NAS by using an SSD cache. And as you're transferring those files to those SSDs, at the same time, the NAS is gonna transfer all those files from the SSDs to the NAS itself. And lastly, there are two PCI Express slots where you can add additional connectivity if you wanted to. And the cool thing with this NAS is that it's already pre-installed with Thunderbolt 3 ports. Now earlier I mentioned that I have a RAID 5 setup and the reason why is because I wanted to use the maximum capacity of all these drives while still having redundancy. Now this NAS supports several RAID setups and I'm gonna talk about four of the most popular ones. RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, and RAID 6. I'm gonna try my very best to explain very simply what these different RAID setups are. Trust me, it took a, a long time to understand how RAID setups work, and so let me try. So RAID 0 basically means that you are connecting all your hard drives connected to your NAS all together. They are striped together. They are acting as one huge unit. So basically, if you have four one terabyte hard drives, that means you have a total capacity of four terabytes to use. The really good thing about RAID 0 is that it's incredibly fast because you are transferring files and spreading it across all these different hard drives at the same time. The big con to using a RAID 0 setup is that if one of those hard drives fails, that means you lose all your data. 
all of it, all because they're connected together. With the RAID 1 setup, you have redundancy, meaning that files are being copied onto another hard drive. So for example, if you have four one terabyte hard drives, with the RAID 1 setup, it doesn't mean that you have four terabytes to use, you actually have two. And the reason why is because of redundancy. And so basically, if you are transferring files and using just these two hard drives, then copies of those files are being transferred to these two other hard drives, redundant copies get it? So a RAID 1 setup is absolutely fantastic just in case one of those hard drives fails. There are a couple of cons to a RAID 1 setup. One is that uh, the file transfer speeds aren't as fast as RAID 0. And the reason why is because you're making redundant copies onto other hard drives. And two, your actual storage capacity isn't that big. And so if you have four one terabyte hard drives, you don't have four terabytes to use, you actually have two, with the other two being used for redundancy. So that's a RAID 1 setup. Now with a RAID 5 setup, which is the setup that I'm using, you're basically maximizing the capacity of all your hard drives and using just one hard drive as redundancy. So I'm using four 14 terabyte hard drives and that's a total capacity of 56 terabytes. Let me do my, my math right, hold on. Let me get that Asian math going. 14 terabytes times four. Okay, cool, 56 terabytes. You see that, 56 terabytes. But with a RAID 5 setup, since I'm using one of those hard drives as redundancy, I'm actually taking away 14 terabytes, which leaves me with about 42 terabytes to use for storage. So yeah, so about 40 terabytes to not only store my current projects, but also archive all my projects as well. So 42 terabytes, not too shabby. Not too shabby. The great thing about a RAID 5 setup is that if one of my hard drives fails, that's okay because all the data saved to that redundant drive will build all my data back if I put in a brand new hard drive. The only con to that setup is that if that redundant drive fails, then I can't rebuild all my data. It's rare, it doesn't happen that often, but if you want to prevent that from happening, then you'd probably wanna go with RAID 6. In a RAID 6 setup, it's pretty much similar to a RAID 5. You are maxing out the capacity of your hard drives, but instead of using one drive as redundancy, you're using two drives. So in my example, I have four 14 terabyte hard drives. If I were to set it up in a RAID 6 configuration, that would be, hold on, that leaves me with 28 terabytes of total storage. So for example, in my setup, I have four, four 14 terabyte hard drives. That means I have 28 terabytes of usable storage where one drive is used for redundancy and the other drive is a backup to that redundancy. So if this drive fails, the redundant drive, then I basically have a backup drive to rebuild my files if, if my redundant drive fails. Okay, so hopefully all that made sense. And if you do want a more deeper dive into different RAID setups, then definitely check out Max Yurov. He's a friend of mine and I actually learned a lot about how RAID setups work. And he also uses QNAP systems and so, definitely check him out and tell him I said hi. Right, so now we're gonna switch gears because I wanna show you how I connect my NAS to my monitor to my computer using Thunderbolt 3. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how I set up my NAS and my desktop setup. So over here is the NAS TVS 472XT and uh, that is on the left side of my desk. At the center is my monitor. So I've connected the NAS to my monitor via Thunderbolt 3 and with the other Thunderbolt 3 that's behind this monitor, I've connected my computer, which is right over here on the right side of my desk. Here, let me put this plant to the side. And as you can see there, it's connected by one single Thunderbolt 3 cable. And that in all is my entire desktop setup, all connected using Thunderbolt 3. So now I'm gonna show you my entire project workflow from beginning to end. Not the entire editing process, but just the project workflow. So whenever I start a brand new project, I copy and paste a template I made of folders and media assets. For example, for a YouTube video, I have three folders, exports, media, and project files. Project files is where I have my Premiere Pro project, I have my thumbnail PSD, and other project files too, like After Effects projects or Illustrator projects. Basically, the project files that open up applications, I store in the project files folder. In the media folder is where I store all my media. So the audio files like sound effects and voiceovers. In my footage folder, I have A-roll, B-roll, product shots, screen recordings. For graphics, I have lower thirds, animations, and things like that. Music's where I place my potential music to use in my videos. Stills is where I place the photos that I want to embed in my videos, or maybe screen grabs from the actual project itself, and basically any media asset that I think should be placed into this folder. And then finally, the exports folder is where I place all my exports. This is where I place all my finished videos, my thumbnail for YouTube, basically all the deliverables I place into the exports folder. So once I copy and paste all those folders to a new project folder, I do my editing, do my magic, I finish the project, yay! 
And once I'm finished, I project manage my entire project, meaning that I can save all the assets that I use for my project. It collects all those assets together and I can save them into one project folder, which I can then archive to my NAS. And that my friends is my entire project workflow from beginning to end. And the fact that I get to archive my projects on a NAS with a RAID 5 setup, I don't have to worry about accidentally dropping an external drive and losing everything on this drive. Never again, never again. Now, keep in mind, having a RAID setup, oh, I probably shouldn't do this. Having a RAID setup isn't necessarily backup because if your house catches on fire and your RAID setup catches on fire, you've lost all your data. So having a true backup solution is to also archive your projects to an offsite location. A lot of people like to use online solutions to back up all their projects. I personally don't because it just takes a long time to upload all my projects and I don't wanna have to pay a subscription fee. Rather, I still use external drives to archive my projects. So basically, I use my NAS for easy access to my current and archive projects, but I also archive my projects on these external drives and save them somewhere else. Like I put them in a safe, a fireproof safe, just in case my house catches on fire or a gorilla breaks through my window and just smashes my NAS. I don't know why I thought that. And because of the front USB ports of the TVS472 and the copy button, I can easily archive, say, this year's projects to a new external hard drive connected to the NAS, press the copy button, and all my projects for that year are saved to this external drive. And then place them into a safe so that a gorilla won't smash it. So that's it for this video, guys. I know that was a lot, but uh, hopefully it was helpful to you. And uh, again, if you are a creator like me looking for a storage solution, a backup solution, and not just rely on multiple hard drives, then you want to get yourself a NAS. Also, don't let your clients hold your hard drives. Clients are dumb. Hope they're not listening. Okay, bye! bye.